So here I'm going to go through a quick complex number review leading up to Euler's formula. So here what we have is a drawing of the complex plane where I'm representing the imaginary, sorry, the real part of a complex number as a horizontal um, axis and the imaginary part on the um, vertical axis here. And that means that a uh, complex number like a plus bi would be represented as a point in the plane where the x-coordinate or the horizontal coordinate would be a and the vertical coordinate would be b. So we can draw a triangle once we put the hypotenuse in and give a name to this angle here and a name to the hypotenuse and those values can easily be calculated from a and b. In particular a would be m cos theta and b would be m sine theta. So if we were given um, a and b, and we wanted to calculate m and theta, we can just use uh, Pythagoras and a bit of trig to find that m is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and theta is the arctan of b over a. So uh, rewriting a plus bi using this sort of notation here, we can see that a plus bi is going to be m factored out multiplied by cosine theta plus i sine theta. So m is called the magnitude of the complex number, and theta is sometimes called the argument or phase of that complex number. OK, so now towards Euler's formula. Recall Taylor series. Uh, so when you have a function, you can approximate that function about some point on the x-axis, let's say x0, by expanding first with the value of the function at the point, and then adding to that a linear approximation, which requires that you know the derivative. And then you can improve that by including a quadratic approximation and so on using higher derivatives. So if I had a Taylor series like this one, let's hope you recall now, uh, which of these functions would have a Taylor series? 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial and so on. So I'll let you think about that and answer that. And what about this one, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus 5 cubed over 5 factorial and so on with alternating odd powers and factorials. Which one of these options is that Taylor series represent? And what about this one? It includes uh, all powers, and it just has a simple progression in the denominator of increasing factorials. So, how are we going to use Taylor series to rewrite cosine theta plus i sine theta? We have two pieces here, sine x and cosine x, written as Taylor series. So let's replace those in the expression cosine theta plus i sine theta and see what we get. Well, there's the cosine series straight up, and there's the sine series with an i multiplying it in front. Now we can do a little bit of rearranging and interleave these so that it increases power by power instead of going odds, evens first and then odds with an i. And you'll notice every other term has an i included in it. So you'll notice here that I have no i, here I have an i, here I have a minus 1 that came from this minus sign, here I have a minus 1 times i that came from this minus sign and this i. Now remember that minus 1 is actually i squared. And here we have minus 1 squared, that is sort of an, an artificial thing that I've done to replace this plus sign here, but it allows us to see that there's actually two minus 1s that we could put here, and given that minus 1 was i squared, minus 1 squared is actually i to the 4. So what we have is a progression that goes 1, i theta, and this minus 1 can be replaced by i squared. Minus 1 times i can be replaced by i cubed. Minus 1 squared can be replaced by i to the fourth, and we can keep on doing this uh, indefinitely. Now this looks very much like 
the Taylor series for the exponential function. And so if we just group the i squared and theta squared, the i cubed and theta cubed, the i to the fourth and theta to the fourth, we now have exactly the form of e to the i theta from its Taylor series. So we can see that cosine theta plus i sine theta is equal to e to the i theta. And that is what we refer to as Euler's formula. And this allows us to rewrite complex numbers instead of as a plus bi or cos theta plus i sine theta, we can write them in terms of the uh, exponential function. So we can add to this list e, a plus bi is equal to m multiplied by e to the i theta.